It's way more storage than you would think in this tiny little nook. I built this out to be my home and I lived and traveled in it full time for two years. Also I have this little pet carrier so I can throw Penny on the front. I have a full size Murphy bed. Let's ask some weird questions. Hi, I'm Loren. This is my dog, Penny. Welcome to our home, the Penny Bago. I typically use the slider side of my van as the living room because I have this incredible Fiamma awning. It is absolutely huge. Um, it's manual, not automatic, but I find that it's not a big deal. It has a little crank, um, pull it out, since it's just, I'm, I am just one person, um, about halfway through, I do have to pull the legs out, a little bit of finagling, um, but it's not a big deal to have that extra shade. Right now, since it is Arizona winter here in the desert, I have been in full lizard mode and have not put the awning out at all. I've been wanting to take in whatever sunshine um, I can get midday, but come summertime, it is so nice to be able to pull the awning out um, especially to uh, adjust it down so it shades this side of the van and keeps it cooler and you don't have to run the fans for uh, as long. Other things I have up on the roof are uh, my solar panels. So I have 300 watts of solar. I also have both of my Max Air fans up there and I have recovery tracks in, in case I get stuck in the mud or sand. I've not had to use them yet. I have gotten stuck a number of times, but I've always been uh, pulled out by someone nearby but it's really nice for peace of mind, especially if you think you're gonna drive on the beach at all. Solar, I do think I probably would have enjoyed having another 100 watts, but with both of the fans up on the roof, it really would have changed the configuration. As is, I can stand up on the roof uh, to watch the sunset or the sunrise, and if I had another solar panel, it would make that really difficult. I also traveled for about a year with a full-size kayak on top of the roof, so there's enough room for me to put a kayak rack up top um, and to store other things. I've stored additional water on the roof. If I had that other solar panel, I would lose that additional space. One of the fun toys that I have added now that I am part-time on the road um, is this Rad Power Bike Rad Mini. It is so much fun. Um, I also have this little pet carrier so I can throw Penny on the front. Plus I love that this is like a place where I can, you know, put stuff, I can put my camera in here or I can put food and bike on over to a friend's van. It's really, really fun in the desert. I went with this step through model instead of the traditional high bar because I am only 5'2 and it is really nice to be able to easily get my feet down on the ground either you know when you're driving or just to get over it i think it's really nice too if you have any um, sort of mobility issues personally my knees are absolute garbage so i love that i can you know still kind of get a workout on the bike but i don't have to lift my leg up over that high bar plus it just looks really freaking cool with that little uh sloped step through and the styling with the white and the leather I enjoy it so much. It is such a blast. Uh, this bike folds down since it is the Rad Mini. Um, there's a big hinge in the middle. The handlebars go down and it folds completely in half, which makes it really compact and easy to maneuver out here. I built this out to be my home and I lived and traveled in it full time for two years um, before I decided that I was getting a little bit tired of what the realities of full-time travel are. Being part-time on the road is both easier and harder than I expected. I think that the main issue, regardless of how much I keep in the van, there is still a packing unpacking process that has to happen to get in and out of my house and in and out of the van. One of the ways that I cut down and make that transition a little bit easier is I made sure that um, the majority of things that I need to live in here are not the things that I need to live in my house. So for example, um, all of my kitchen things that are from the van stay in the van and all of the kitchen things that are in my house stay in my house. I wanna be able to pack a bag with clothing and grab whatever food is in the fridge that is gonna go bad and throw it in the van and you know get on the road and go. 
I think part-time becomes difficult when you have to think through a very long list of like, I need to bring this clothing and also salt and olive oil and pepper. Um, so now that I have been part-time since uh, December 31st of 2020, I've gotten way better at that transition. I've spent at least one week in my van every month um, or even just weekends. My, uh, the farm that I purchased is about an hour outside of Asheville, North Carolina. So I will frequently just throw an overnight bag into the van and drive down to Asheville and stay down there for the weekend. Uh, I also love that as a part-timer, I don't ever have to do winter. So um, I can spend summer and spring at my house in North Carolina when it's really lovely and when I can you know, utilize the farm and grow things. And as soon as it gets cold, I can throw stuff in the van and come out west for the winter. I really wanted to just have that peace of mind of like when it's not fun anymore that I have a home base that is my own and not my parents. I feel like that really was affecting my mental health, especially during COVID um, and as a woman in her 30s that the home base I was going to wasn't my home base. It was a place I hadn't lived since I was 18. And now that when I need to refresh, it's going to my own adult home that I own that has really um, just made me enjoy both being at the house more and being in the van more. So this is my little kitchen. I wanted it to come out into the door here so you can have um, really you're, you're maximizing the space and you're also making sure that you have access to fresh air because this is a propane stovetop. I usually just vent open the window or open the fan to make sure that it's uh, safe in here to cook. I also have this cutting surface that I can pull up. Um, this is the only piece of butcher block uh, of my countertops that I actually cut on. It's also great to swivel um, the side seat here around and use as an eating space or an additional workspace. I maintain all of the butcher block countertops by using a food safe um, mineral oil and a conditioner. Uh, on them to make sure that it's just staying really nice and clean. Obviously out here in the desert, there's a lot of uh, dust and dirt that blows around. So it is a surface that I clean before I cook on or I just grab this little cutting board and use that instead. Part of the reason I wanted to extend this out into the doorway is that I do like to cook and I wanted to be able to have um, a space that allowed me to cook whatever I wanted. I didn't want to feel like because I was in 72 square feet, I couldn't cook the types of meals um, that I would cook in a regular size home. When this is up, um, obviously this is a little bit of a narrow shoot, but outside of when I'm actively cooking, I leave this down and there's plenty of space to get in and out. I also think it's really nice to be able to sit here and still talk to your friends if they're outside or if you have another van park with their slider door open to you, you can both be cooking inside of your homes um, and looking at each other instead of tucked away into the van or pulled back over here where I'd have to turn um, to speak with my friends. So on the front side of this cabinet, I have a um, pull-out drawer, which is where I keep all of my silverware, tin foil, clothespins, um, dish towels, just basically the everyday things. This drawer is um, soft clothes. I feel like maybe I would change that. It latches magnetically. So if you take a really hard turn, um, this is pretty much the only thing that does fly open on a pretty regular basis. Right below that is my um, Dometic fridge. I really have a love-hate relationship with this fridge, but I will say after um, having been in a lot of different rigs and watched a million different tiny home tours, I don't think that there's a fridge I prefer that fits inside of the camper van. My main cons about this is since it is a fridge-freezer combo, anything you push to the very back of uh, the fridge wall, which is where the cooling elements are, that has the potential to freeze if you have um, the fridge turned up high enough to keep ice from melting but I do like that it's not top loading, so I don't necessarily have to unload everything to get what I want. It's easy to have things upright and it takes up way less space than um, the big top loading fridge freezer combos. So I went with this uh, bar sink that is made by Ruvati. And at the time that I had the van built out, honestly, this was one of the larger sinks that I was seeing in uh, camper van conversions, but now I would say it is on the smaller side and I actually frequently see people um, flip their stove top the other way and then go with kind of an oversized farmhouse sink. 
I still think this is a pretty good size. Um, it also comes with this little cutting board, which I don't cook on, but I do frequently use just sort of as a tabletop surface, a strainer basket, and then this little, I don't even know what you would call this, a thing to, to set your pan, pots and pans on inside of it. And it is still deep enough for me to put pans in. Um, I also wash my hair in this sink on a pretty regular basis. I do not have a Planet Fitness membership, so I will just pull this out um, and use it to wash my hair, which is really nice. And it is deep enough for me, especially since I'm quite short, to be able to get my head in the sink there. And then you can also still pull um, the hose out the other door, though I will admit I have never done that. But that was part of the, the thought when I placed this here was that it would reach um, that way pretty easily. I have a five gallon gray water tank that is under the sink and I just make sure to use um, biodegradable products in here and I have a little strainer for any food waste um, so I can catch that out and put it in the trash. Um, and then I mostly just dump that out on the ground in places where it is legal to do so, or I wait and go to a dump station if I'm somewhere where that's not an option. So this is sort of my uh, auxiliary kitchen slash water and cleaning supply area. Um, the top cabinet here is all of my um, dishes. And I really, for the first two years that I was on the road, I had way, way too many dishes. I thought that people would come over and you would need to offer them water and put the food that you made on your plates. And that's just not the reality out here. Everyone brings their own um, utensils over because water is obviously a very valuable resource. So doing dishes should never uh, fall onto the host plate. So um, one of the things I did when I got back on the road this year was to remove a lot of those extra dishes from the cabinets and now I've got all of this space which allowed me to be able to bring um, a larger coffee grinder than I used to have which is so nice. Yeah and it's just very spacious and open which I love. So the middle section here um, I have a little toaster oven which I love. It does have a pretty significant power draw when it is kicking on and warming up but once it gets to its desired temperature it's really really minimal so you absolutely can bake something or roast something for 20 to 40 minutes if i'm concerned about the power i will just turn the van on while it heats up and then turn the van off once it's on um, and that's really convenient it's quite a small size so it doesn't fit something like a like a standard frozen pizza but you can you know cook a ton of things in it it's really nice to have real toast on the road that is i feel like such a a little luxury i just use a little tension rod here to make sure that as i'm driving around it doesn't come forward and then i also store stuff around it so right now i have um, extra baked goods that i don't want to get crushed in the main pantry space i keep my napkins up here um, behind it i have the base for my blender um, and also some hot trivets that are bigger than what would fit in this front drawer. Uh, when you open this, it gives you access to two different um, storage areas here. The first one is where I keep most of um, my cooking things. So pots, pans, can opener, baking goods, strainer, all that good stuff goes in here. Then uh, in this tall cabinet here, this is actually um, where my table that goes back in the back of the van for the dinette is stored. And I also um, have this little bed tray from Bed Bath & Beyond, which I love because you can uh, use that if I want to sit in bed and have breakfast in the morning or even just a table surface to work on when I don't wanna pull the entire table out. Since this is a solid wall, it actually gives me a, a bit of additional storage space up against it here. So one of the things that I do is I've got little hooks um, that are just command stripped on there and I've got a single panel of blackout curtain that I bought from Walmart and I just actually fished a, um, a rope through it and put a loop on it and I just flip those up there so there's no curtain rod, it doesn't stay up during the day, which I really like. Um, I'll put it up to regulate uh, the heat or the cold during the day, otherwise I just put it up at night when I'm in a place where I don't want any light coming in or I don't want people to see inside of the van. I also have a bunch of different hooks on the back here um, to hang jackets, sweatshirts, my, my robe. I've got a garment bag with a couple of dresses and a jacket that um, I don't want folded and I want to not, I don't want like other garments touching. It's way more storage than you would think in this tiny little nook. I keep uh, my dirty clothes bag there, two different outdoor rugs, a little step stool, a little outside table, 
Penny's leash, her harness, uh, backpack, some fanny packs. So there's a ton of stuff just uh, pushed back in there. So the ceilings and the walls in here are all Eastern cedar, which gives it that really beautiful kind of red color. Uh, when I first moved into the van, the whole thing just smelled like cedar all the time, which was incredible. But I still think it's really beautiful. It's really durable. Um, it's held up well. I've got a little bit of water damage here and there from you know, stuff that happens on the road. I have two of these Max Air fans. I've got one in the front and one in the back. And that makes such a huge difference, especially um, utilizing the slider door and the back door or the windows that are on this slider and um, adjacent to my dinette set. If I turn the fans to pull the air up, it pulls this incredible cross breeze and basically works like air conditioning in here. I also have a curtain that I tuck up into this headliner shelf. That is because if you had to walk through here and the curtain was dangling down, that would obviously be very annoying. But since there is a nice big window on the slider door, I obviously want a curtain for uh, privacy and to, let, uh, to, to block out the light in the evening. So I have worked remotely since 2018. I actually transitioned my in-person 40 hour a week job in Washington DC into a part-time remote position when I first got on the road. So the realities of that looked like um, set work hours that I had to adjust to stay um, in the Eastern time zone. It really afforded me um, the ability to, to not really have a, a major loss of income and to have that structure the first year I was on the road, I saved a ton of money. When the contract I was on was up, I decided to not seek um, another opportunity. I am fortunate enough to also work for uh, my family's business. So my family is in tourism publishing. We publish uh, magazines in South Florida and I do the graphic design, social media, and, and the assistant editor for my family's business. Uh, and then uh, I met um, Chris from Tiny Home Tours when he filmed my van tour in June of 2019 and he reached out to me in, gosh, I think like September of 2020 and asked if I'd be interested in, you know, cutting up some videos. So now I've been working with Tiny Home Tours for over a year um, in a much bigger role than what I initially started as and I have really enjoyed um, transitioning into freelance. Having had all these different remote jobs, um, what works best for me is this freelance role, but still with some structure. I like to set work hours for myself. So I usually work um, eight to two, Monday through Thursday in whatever time zone I am in. But the reality of that as a freelancer versus when I was in that um, you know, salary DC job is that I don't have to work those hours. I really, I set them aside so that my brain knows that I have this space where you know, if I work these hours, I will get 20 hours a week. Um, people know that I am available to be emailed, texted, called during those hours. And if I wake up in the morning and the weather is beautiful and I wanna take a hike, I can go do that instead. If I start grinding away and I really you know, am enjoying working and it's seeming easy and I've got a lot of stuff to do, I can work an eight or a 10 hour day. I can work a 30 minute day. So that has really been wonderful and is, is well adapted to this lifestyle where you might be alone for weeks at a time. You might be with friends for weeks at a time. It might rain for five days straight. It might be gloriously sunny and you're in a location where you wanna do a bunch of outdoor activities. So coming um, back from the kitchen area, um, this main really large cabinet is what I use as my pantry. So um, these are hard to open because these little plastic things are filled with magnets and then there's pieces of metal and that's actually how all of the uppers stay closed. Um, they will occasionally open if I'm on a very intense road and the weight of all the stuff comes forward, it can pop it open. Pantry is very full right now. Below the pantry, I've got a little magnetic knife rack. I get asked all the time if the knives fall. Um, I have never had one fall and I've driven down a lot of gnarly roads without them ever shifting. This space here is extra countertop, but this actually I think is the most ingenious part of 
um, my van build because it is actually a hidden uh, composting toilet and where I keep all of my bathroom things. So this just flips up here. So all you have to do to get into the bathroom is open the doors here. And this is, I mean, it's just so much storage. In my van builder's original design, this entire unit is actually a wet bath. So this uh, pantry piece is gone. Um, this countertop is gone. And you would have a shower door here with the composting toilet and then a shower. It's very easy for me to wash my hair in the sink wash my hair at a campground, stop at a friend's place. So I just didn't need to dedicate all that space to a shower. Also, if this was a wet bath, I couldn't store all of these bathroom items in here. And there's just a ton, there's a ton in here. It's where I keep all of the bathroom things. So at the bottom of this kitchen piece, this is where I have my water stored. So this piece is magnetized and then it has a track that it runs in, so it pops out and then, just lift it up and out. So I have 30 gallons of fresh water. Um, I also store cleaning supplies in here. And this is where my hot water system kind of runs through and the pump and the filter, vacuum, that's about it. So welcome to the main living space of the van. So basically when we get to the end of here, that's kind of the end of the kitchen. And then this cabinet is multi-purpose bathroom and um, additional kind of pantry. So it is all of my spices, um, cooking oils, and then just right on the side, I keep um, my jewelry, perfume, um, toothpaste, and my toothbrush. The next two cabinets are all of my clothes storage. I can get it all into one, but the amount of work it takes when it's that crammed in to pull them in and out, it just isn't worth having the extra um, space. So I have it set as two. I use these e-bags, which I love so that everything can stay really contained. They're color coded, um, so I know kind of what is in them and I can just grab them really fast. When I was designing this van, one of the things that was most important to me was that I had a space where I can entertain, where I can work, um, and where I can really just sit that is not on the bed. For me, being able to work on the road, it's really important to get into that headspace, to have a space that feels like it's separate from my bedroom, and that is why I went with this dinette configuration. As you can see, I've got two really large bench seats. I can fit a ton of people in here, and then there's a table that goes here in the middle. This back piece of the Murphy bed can also um, unlatch by itself and come down across the back to make kind of a u-shaped seating area as well if you have a lot of people i also love to pull the back piece down and uh, sit across with my legs out and read a good book that you know just feels like a much more luxurious position than sitting upright and reading uh, it's funny you know i feel like you consistently hear in tours people saying like they never convert their um, dinette into the dinette that they just leave it as the bed but for me actually the thing that i don't use as much or don't convert as much is the table not the bed so the murphy bed is so so easy to just pull down and put back up it doesn't require me to make the bed or do um, do anything with the bedding but the table you know i have to pull the piece down i have to put both the legs and i have to put the table down which i know doesn't sound like very much but if i have a quick meeting in the middle of the day um, i frequently just shift the fruit basket over to one side and sit um, over here on the edge and use this as a work surface what i love about having the table is that i can have you know 10 people over here and we can have a potluck dinner um, we can play games. There's a lot of nice space to like play a board game, play card games. And when I know that I'm going to work a full work day, I've got enough space to put out my laptop, camera gear, planners, um, everything I need, or to shift my laptop over and eat lunch. So I definitely do use it, but that is the piece that I find is a little bit more work um, versus the, the bed conversion. I have a full-size Murphy bed, which I love so much. I find it to be incredibly convenient and it's really, really easy to um, put down and put back up. So all you have to do to set it up, um, we pull these cushions off. I keep uh, my picture here, which is a map that I embroider, embroider with my travels as I go. I keep it held up just by Velcro. Then the bed stays up with these tension straps and actually it can hold with just one. So I usually do this back one first 
um, and then I store the straps over here. This back piece, as I said before, can come down on its own. Yeah, so you just toggle this, and then this comes down across to add an extra piece of seating if you want. Latches back. Um, whole thing is just staying up on its own just with one. Then once you pull this one off, you can pretty easily just shift your weight onto it. You're really not holding any of it until it starts to come down. And it's really that easy. That's all it is. You're ready to go to bed. This is a full size mattress. And then the cushions over here stay as well. If I wanted, I could not have this bedding set up and actually include those cushions and it would be a queen. Um, I think a full is just fine for two people or for me and the dog. So it's not a big deal. I like being able to have those cushions there because I can um, set things there, like I can put up my iPad and watch a movie. I can set my book, my water bottle for the middle of the night, kind of works as a little nightstand. On the other side of the dinette here, I have all of my electrical system. And then the front part is my bar cart. You do have to remove both cushions to open this fully. This gives me access to uh, most of the wiring here. I also have a lot of the little um, circuit breakers that I can access right here if I need to change out a circuit for any reason or pull it out to do a hard reset. I have access to my Wi-Fi booster in here and just most of the wires. One of the things that I really liked about having a professional builder do my van is that they ran way more electrical wires than I actually have things for. So if I want to add additional electronics, the wiring is already run through the van and I don't need to rip apart the build to add it. There's extra switches and there's extra wires and they're all labeled and right here. This little piece actually is a false bottom shelf. So it pulls up and underneath are um, my lithium batteries. The things I keep in here are shoes, um, my laptop, book, iPad, extra lighter, incense, grill tools. Um, so it's the stuff that I access relatively frequently, but not all the time. And I found that this is the safest place um, for my laptop because it's a really nice shallow drawer here. So it's not banging around. It's never going to open and fall out. Underneath, I have um, 400 amp hours of lithium batteries by Battleborn, which I love so much. That was absolutely worth every single penny that they cost. I never have to worry about power. Um, I have powered my van and other people's vans. I have charged people's auxiliary batteries. I can run the convection oven. It just absolutely was, was worth having that big lithium system. One of the really cool things about this back cabinet is that since when the Murphy bed is down, you can't access um, this side of the benches at all. So this cabinet opens up from this way, you know, when the bed is up, not a big deal. And it also pulls out as a drawer from the back. So when the bed is down, you can open the back door and pull out that drawer and access everything that's in here. When I was full time on the road, I mostly stored uh, dog things in here and a little bit of bar. But now that I am part time, I've shifted Penny's items to the cab um, kind of under where her bed is. And this is 100% my wine cellar and bar cabinet. If you're watching this and you're trying to figure out if this is right for you, if you can truly do this, um, I, I really believe both from having spent a bunch of time on the road and from um, working with Tiny Home Tours, so listening to other Nomad stories all the time, I think if you really want it, if you have that 80%, like that you're ready for it, that you think that this lifestyle would improve your life, anyone can do this. It's just getting that tiny voice in the back of your head that's telling you that you can't, that it's too scary, that it's too big. It's just getting that little voice to quiet because really once you, once you take the leap, it's so much easier than all of the stresses and pressures of your regular job and your regular life. Thank you for watching and taking a little tour of my tiny home. If you want to keep up with me on the road, you can see Penny and I on my Instagram at flit float fly away. Mm -hmm.